Hey friends, thanks so much for dropping by. My name is Patrick God, and today it's about JSON columns in Entity Framework 7. So Entity Framework Core 7, but they ditched the core term now and also the older .NET Framework and the old Entity Framework stuff. Not important anymore now, it's Entity Framework 7 and with that we've got JSON columns. Isn't that great? And now this came with the second release candidate of .NET 7 and I thought, well, let's try this out and this is what we're going to do in this tutorial. Now I will show disclaimer here. I will show you four different ways to do this. We've got uh, one entity called superhero and another entity called hero details. And this is one relationship. So one superhero got one hero details model entity relationship you know what i mean one to one and there are well four different ways to do this there's one let's say classic way that i would use most of the time without really configuring anything with the on model creating method hope you already know what i mean you can simply and this is the beauty of code first migration with any framework actually you can just create your entities then your data context and then you say well i want to get uh, this certain database set right like the superheroes for instance and the models then have the relationship in there. So let's say we've got the superhero class and the superhero class has then one property called the hero details class. Then the hero details have some properties and also an ID for the primary key. And with that, then your entry framework and code first migrations will already know what's going on here and create your tables, two tables. This is important. It will create two tables. This is really nice. I like that. I learned it that way. So one, one, one table for the superhero and one table for the hero details then but you can change that and this is what we will do today so well if you want to know how json columns and also other ways of creating these relationships with code First migration and framework 7 now works stay tuned stay with me here and keep watching please and if you like this video and learned something as always i would really appreciate it if you click the like button maybe even subscribe to my channel thank you very very much it does make a difference and if you want to learn even more get these videos in your inbox and get early access to my upcoming courses I mean, .NET 7 is around the corner or maybe you, while you're watching this, it is already there. Then you can also expect new courses like the .NET 7 Web Dev Bootcamp. And as a newsletter subscriber, you will be the first to know when these are available. So uh, thank you very much for also subscribing to my newsletter. And now enjoy the tutorial. All right, so let's start from scratch here. I start Visual Studio 2022 and we create a web API because I also want to add a controller where we will see that with the, let's say, default link statements, we can still access all the properties, everything from our entities, right? And I also want to show you, well, in total, four different ways on how to actually run code first migrations with Entity Framework and how they result then in the database tables, right? So I hope uh, you got some time here. If you're only interested in the JSON columns, check out the chapters and then uh, just jump to that and you're good to go, I guess. So ASP.NET Core Web API, it shall be, let's call this EF7 JSON uh, columns, maybe. Yeah, I think that's okay. .NET 7 preview it is. By the time of recording, we've got release candidate two and also the preview edition of uh, Visual Studio 2022. So, but it's just, not many days are left as, uh, until .NET 7 is released. So I think um, you will be fine when you uh, do not want to get the preview edition of the SDK and Visual Studio and just wait a couple more days. So there's our web API, typical stuff. We've got our programs here as the weather forecast example with the specific or the corresponding weather forecast controller. And now what we want to do is we want to get uh, a relationship, right? So let's just real quick create two entities and I missed my superheroes. So let's create a superhero class superhero it is and this guy now gets an id and also now this is the relationship hero detail and the name no not superhero hero detail we create this class in the sec visual studio don't worry and then these are just called details can be null and again real quick here i know i could create a models folder 
bear with me here. This is just a real quick and dirty tutorial. I think you want to learn something in not too much time. So now here, hero details. And this thing now only gets a name and a city. All right. So we've got a string, a name, like uh, Spider-Man, for instance, by default, this shall be empty. And then also the city, place of birth or whatever it could be. String empty. All right, so that's that. And now here, this is called hero details and we're good to go. So this is our really, really simple relationship. We've got superheroes with an ID and then already the details and then details. Of course, this could be something like an address. I don't know, date of birth, custom ID, whatever it is. And in this case, it's just the name and the city of the superhero. Now with that, we can actually already move on with Entity Framework itself, meaning creating a data context, but let's first install Entity Framework, right? So there is this little page here, the new get gallery for .NET EF. We need the .NET tool. And again, if you're watching this when uh, .NET 7 is already released, just type in this thing here, .NET tool install dash dash global .NET dash EF. With that, you get the latest released version. But if you want to uh, try this with the current release candidate or a preview edition of some .NET version, also for the future, maybe, maybe there's a preview for Android Framework 8, then, then uh, just go to versions and make sure to specify the correct version here. So you can copy this then. And then we open the package manager console here, for instance, in Visual Studio. And as you can see, I actually already got this installed here, right? And when I try to install this now, I just paste it, it's telling me it is already installed, right? So what you can do is actually you can uninstall everything like that remove the version then in this case, now it's uninstalled. And here I can again, install it. And you can also use the update statement here instead of install to get to the latest version, but again, only with the released version, right? So if you want to use a release candidate, a preview version, then make sure to specify the version as well. Additionally, we need NuGet packages. So right click the project, manage NuGet packages, and these are first, let's make sure to use the browse tab. Also include pre-release, right? And there they are already. You could also just search for them. Uh, Microsoft Entity Framework Core SQL Server. Here it's uh, also .NET 7 release candidate two. If I would not check this, then what do we get? Loading, loading, loading here, version 6.0.10, right? So this is the big difference. And here in this case, to use JSON columns, we need .NET 7 with Entity Framework 7. Please note, it is now called Entity Framework 7, not Entity Framework Core 7 anymore. I made another video about that. Internally, it's still Entity Framework Core, but the official name now is Entity Framework 7 and the old .NET Framework, the older Entity Framework, well, this is pretty much gone, right? So we will continue with Entity Framework Core here and .NET Core. So long story short, install SQL Server, the preview edition in my case, we hit accept. And another package we need is this thing here, Microsoft Entity Framework Core Design, and also here the release candidate two of .NET 7. All right, and with that, we can go back to the Solution Explorer. And in here now, this time I create a new folder because I'm just used to it and call this data. And in here now we create a new class and call this data context. This will now be our DB context, our database context to access the database. If you have no idea what I am talking about, please check out my other videos about energy framework or just write it down in the comment section and I will do my best then with Entity Framework 7 to create some kind of introduction tutorial with Entity Framework, maybe this is a good idea. If you want this, please, please, please write it down in the comments. So I know that there are people who want to see this. And apart from that, you can, of course, check out my .NET Jumpstart tutorial. It will be updated with .NET 7, of course. There we will do this as well 
in teeny tiny steps and uh, explain everything, but you only need a couple of hours and you pretty much know the most important stuff about Web API and Engine Framework and also authentication with JSON Web Tokens. But this is just a little commercial. Sorry about that. But if you're interested, again, please check it out. Link in the video description. So we uh, want to have the DB context now. DB context. Jesus, I'm really, really tired today. DB context it is. We need Microsoft Engine Framework Core for that. That's already nice. And um, now we need a constructor here. I'm curious. No, it does not work. I have no idea why the build in snippet does not work. Properties work, but CTOR for constructor not here. Again, tell me in the comments, does this work for you? CTO, is it Visual Studio? What the heck is going on here? Maybe the latest update, I don't know. So since this is not working, we need a public constructor data context. We need a parameter here, db a context options, data context. We call this then options and we need the base constructor as well. Also with these options here, let me again close the solution explorer. This is now our constructor. And now the thing is, we first need to configure the connection string, right? So we can do this either here or for instance, in the app settings, a JSON file here, and then grab them from there. Let's just do that in the on uh, configuring. So we type override on configuring it is. And in here now we say options builder use SQL Server. This is now why we needed the provider package, the NuGet package for SQL Server, because we, we are using SQL Server here. And now also a connection string. And in here now I've got SQL Server Express installed on my local machine. So in this case, this will be uh, simply SQL Express, and then the database name, uh, I don't know, Jason Columns, superhero, test DB, or oh, awesome name. And uh, then trusted connection set to true. And one thing that is new, we need trust server certificate also set to true. This was new, is new with Energy Framework 7. If you've got other experiences, again, please tell me that in the comments. Hope now you can read everything on one screen. So SQL Express, it is the local host SQL Express database is superhero test TV, trusted underscore connection true and trust server. See that server certificate is also true. All right. Okay, now the default way I would do this is I just add a db set here, db set of type super hero. And I call this simply heroes, like that, for instance. And this is then the table name, all right, that will be created uh, with the migration. All right. Now to make this work, we have to make one more change to the hero date details. But I will first show you uh, the actual error message meaning we open the terminal again or the package manager console. Now we can write .NET EF. Let's just have a look first to so see this database, TV context migrations. These are the comments, commands that are available here. And first we need migrations. So .NET EF migrations add, and then since this is the initial migration, let's just write initial well and make sure to change the directory too, because here you can see we've got uh, the solution folder, but we have to be in the actual project folder. So CD, EF, and so on. And now we can again write .NET EF migrations at initial. And where is it? Show me the it even failed. Okay, what the heck is going on here? This is not expected actually. And if record does not exist in the namespace. Okay, this is interesting. So let's just rebuild this maybe. Well, it's the preview edition of Visual Studio, right? Maybe I forgot something, I don't know. Let's try this one more time. Add initial, build started, build succeeded. 
unable to create an object outside data context. Oh yeah, I forgot one more thing. Let's <laughs> see that it's late and I'm tired, but still I hope you learned something. In the program CS, of course, we have to register the the uh, the DB context. Maybe I should do this live. In this case, I'm pretty sure one of you would tell me that, right? So uh, yeah, and the the data context, of course like that okay so now let's try this for the third time build started build succeeded and this is what i wanted this is what i wanted to, to, to see hero details requires a primary key all right and this is interesting because this is the only way where you where you need this so what we can do here now pretty simple and id and now we're talking right so with that now We've got our migration files. So this is the first way and the typical way I do this. If you think the other ways are better, again, please tell me that in the comment section. Lots of opportunities to write some comments in this video. And this file now, this is important here in the migrations folder. You see that Entity Framework creates the hero details table with the ID name city and also the heroes table with an ID and a details ID. So. You know, we, we don't have it here actually, but Entity Framework is doing this automatically and this is really great and it adds the primary keys and the foreign keys and so on. And, and now we can run a .NET EF database update. With update, we will also create the actual database. And uh, you can, if you want, you can have a look at all the commands, but let me first open uh, the SQL Server Management Studio in my case. And then we can actually have a look at the new database and then we will delete it and implement all the other ways. All right. So, okay, there we are. Databases, lots of test databases. This is great. There's an e-commerce course, by the way. And here it is, superhero test DB. We see the tables, hero details and heroes. Right. And again, I'm, I'm, I'm doing this that way because I really want to emphasize the differences that you see here. All right. So we've got hero details with ID name city and the columns with ID and details ID. And now again, if that's too much for you, you can just skip this. I want to add a controller. So with that controller, then I want to test what is happening if we uh, add superheroes and also try to find heroes with a specific city, for instance, right? So let's just add a new controller here. It's an empty API controller. We call this superhero controller. Again, we need a constructor actually, but it's not, not that way today. So public super almost public superhero controller. See how rarely I do this that way. And here we need the data context, call this context and we assign this field here at the underscore. I know I can configure this, didn't do it. So now with that, we've got our constructor and I'd say, let's just add two methods. One method to add heroes and one to get heroes by a certain city, all right? And this then the first one would be HTTP post public async task action result. So I see the types with swagger UI. Otherwise I could also just use the I action result, but in that case, I wouldn't see the types in swagger. And here now again, talking about all that in the course and my other tutorials. So maybe you want to subscribe. This would be really, really nice. Thank you so much for doing that. And now here we just say context heroes. This is how we can access them now add range and here we can add the list then and with await context save change async yes IntelliCode that's correct and let's then um, return all the heroes now from the database so context heroes to list async maybe all right so this is real quick the post method and now to filter the heroes by a city we just write this method. Maybe we can just copy this. Okay, now it's time for copy and paste errors. We get heroes, but here now with the city and actually, let's just say bar heroes is now awaits 
context heroes almost heroes where the hero detailed city contains the city okay and we also make a list out of this so to list async it is and here we just return the heroes and let's just say this is always not null. okay now this is really really bad please don't do this at home but for this tutorial it works okay i think that's it first we add heroes then we get heroes let's run this and this is one thing i prepared let's just have a look here okay this is our one new application and I've got the payload here. So let's just do this, right? So by the way, here you see here now all the types. And um, let's try this out. We can actually add this. So we add Spider-Man living in New York City, Iron Man living in Malibu, Daredevil living in New York City. And again, when we have a look here, edit up to 100 rows, nothing there. And at the top 200 rows, nothing here, here as well. We execute and we get all our here. We get all our heroes back. Execute SQL, there they are. And in the details, we also see that stuff. And now let's try to filter them by this specific city. We can just enter new for instance, hit execute and we do not get the details this is interesting let's have a quick look maybe we also need to include the details of course so like that try this one more time And now we've got it. Okay, so this just works. Great stuff. Okay, 20 minutes and we got uh, the old way or my typical way to do this. Now I wanna show you three other ways. I warned you about that. You can skip with the help of the time codes or the chapters. So now we can enjoy this little blog post here. Announcing any firmware core seven RC2 JSON columns. And Arthur here, great blog post by the way is showing us how we can do this with an author and addresses and so on. And I wanna do this as well now with our superheroes, all right? So what we need now is the on model creating. And regarding our models, we can also make some changes here. Let me just uh, stop the app. And now, also very important, we have to delete the database. So delete this thing, make sure to close the existing connections, otherwise it would it, you would just waste a lot of time and uh, then we can now remove the ID again here from the hero details we've got our superhero now the models look like this hero details name and city and superhero ID and details and now regarding the data context we can actually remove the DB set here but again now we override the um, on model creating and the first way now you can do this is use everything in just one single table, all right? And the way you do this is like that. So you get the model builder and then entity superhero, entity superhero it is. And you just say that one superhero owns one, and then SH for superhero, it's short, Jesus going on here <laughs> not the superhero superhero owns the details okay and now i know why IntelliCode was doing that stuff because i forgot the parenthesis here so this is everything model builder entity superhero owns one details right so this is the relationship one superhero has one relationship a one-to-one -one relationship to uh hero details all right so that's it and now we remove the migration we do that with with .NET EF. migrations remove 
Uh, build failed again. Okay, this is really interesting. What's going on here? Data context is okay. <laughs> oh sure, of course. What the heck am I telling you here? We of course need the 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 uh, DB set here in this case if we want to use the controller here. But if you don't, well, maybe there are some cases where you don't, and I tested this without. <laughs> so this is why I, why I told you this. Um, so sorry about that. If you want to access this stuff, then of course you need the DB set, but the migration would also work without the database set, all right? So this is just important to, to, to mention here. Uh, so let's just edit back again, the superhero and heroes uh, DB set. So this is then necessary for your controller or for any function where you want to access the heroes uh, from the context and uh, just regarding the migrations this is in this case not necessary the only thing to consider is that the name then of the table would be different i think well you know what since we already got almost half an hour here let's just test this so we remove the the uh, db set here and in the superhero controller we just remove the methods real quick so now everything is fine and uh, again, pay attention here now in the where's the data context. We've got our uh, or we don't don't have our DB set here, but we've got the on model creating where we define the relationship between a superhero and the details. And now when you got your DB set, then the name of the table will be heroes. But otherwise, it's I think it's superhero. So let's just remove the migration again. This is the old one. So uh, let's try that. Hope this works now. Yeah, it seems so. And now we can add it back. Add initial. All right. And now with that, you can already see here that, yeah, we've got the name superhero now for our table. And it's only one table, right? And it would create an ID field and now details name and details city. And in the database, yeah, yeah, there you see the name then would be details underscore name and details underscore city. But since I also want to show you the controller, let's just remove this one more time. And uh, let's just add the DB set back and also the controller methods. And now everything okay? Yeah. And now let's add it again. Okay, now this worked. And drum roll heroes table. Nice. So now you see it is called heroes. And still we've got the ID and the details name and the details city. And now let's update the database here to see that in action. .nef database update. And we also run the, the application one more time. So now let's have a look. Let's just refresh. Refresh, close this. We've got our superhero test DB with only one table now. And here we've got details name and so on. And when we um, edit the rows, looks like that, it's bad, right? I don't like it that way, really. But uh, let's go back to Swagger one more time. There it is, all right, so let's just refresh. And here now, I try this out. And again, I've got my uh, payload here. Execute. This seems to work, right? And of course, now if you wanna filter this, for New York City, for instance, we've got these two, and in the database, looks like that. All right, so this is the other way you can do. And now if you say, oh my gosh, only one table for one relationship, mm -mm. I, I, I learned something else when I studied computer science, so please give me two tables here at least. Well, I've got you covered, we can do this as well. Let's just stop the app first. There it is, stop this, remove the database again. Close the connections. And now here we remove the migration again. And the changes are really, really easy. Really, really easy. 
because in our data context now, we've got this relationship here, right? And what we need is we, we have to add a navigations builder like that. <clears throat> so one more option in essence. And here now we can say navigations builder simply to table. And here now we can also define the name of the table, like hero details, for instance. All right, close this and that's it. This is everything you have to do. And to use JSON then, this is also really, really simple. But first let's just do it that way. We add the migration again with .NETF migrations at initial. And now in the migration file, you will see We've got the heroes table and the hero details table changes here now is that we've got the superhero ID. Remember the very first way was a little bit different. We've got the heroes table and then here a details ID. And this is simply now the other way around, but still with primary keys and foreign keys. So this is nice. And again, just to show you, and now I think you, you, you've got time, right? So we can update the database and then uh, we run the app to have a look again how this works and if it works. So refresh, superhero, hero details, and the hero, just the ID. It's funny, somehow. Okay, and now here, let's see, get Swagger. Let's add them again, execute. There they are, and here they are as well. And now we can also filter by the city. All right, so this works as well. And now finally, Jason, kudos to you if you did not skip to this chapter here, but if you did, I totally understand, of course. So let's just stop the app first again. And uh, now let's remove the migration and the database is still here. What did I do? Delete. Oh yeah, I forgot to delete the database, of course. So we stop the app, database is deleted. Now we can remove it. The migration. All right, and now navigations builder to JSON. That's it. All right. It's that simple. <laughs> Pretty great stuff, really. And now let's just add the migration. And you will see, I thought you would see. Oh, yeah. This has to be removed. And now, <laughs> again, it's late. It worked. So, see that it's even simpler, more simple than uh, creating the table somehow because you do not have to specify a name or anything. Well, it's again, only one table. If you would like to do it that way in production, I leave this up to you really. I gotta admit, I'm not the biggest fan of JSON columns. We've got lots and lots of problems at work with that, but this is, uh, this is another topic here maybe. So create table, we've got the heroes table. And now for the details, we've got an nvarchar max. And well, the name is details because this is this is nice in essence because this is the name of the of the property here as well. And we've only got the ID. Well, th this is everything, right? And, and now let's have a look. Okay, I know this is this is interesting actually. This is really interesting and of course awesome stuff because many people wanted that. So now Let's just update the database, .netf database update. And uh, with that, okay, this worked, nice. Let's close this, I'll refresh. And now it's getting exciting, right? So we've got only two columns, look exactly as the, as the model. Nothing here, but if you skip to this chapter, we also created the the controller to test this. So let's run the application. And here's Swagger now. We had tried out. 
And there's our payloads, right? So this is how it looks without any IDs or something. Execute. There's the result. It looks exactly the same, right? As the ways before. We just get the idea of the superhero and also the details. It looks awesome. You would not know that this is now a JSON column in the database. And this is the most important thing. Now, if you skipped again, I wanna I wanna show you this. And now here in the in the controller, we get this simple statement here. We just uh, it's it's really the way you know it already. We got the heroes by context heroes, so we access the DB set with include details because we want to see them. I forgot that. Sorry about that. And then where the hero details and then the city contains and so on, right? And with that now. Let's try to get the ones that live in New York City. Bam, works. We've got Spider-Man and Daredevil, and this now is how it looks in the database, exactly like that. So we really got the JSON stuff in there. Okay, so now this took way longer because, well, I just wanted to, to show you every single step without copy and pasting anything, except the payloads, yeah. But uh, now you see with Entity Framework 7, JSON columns, are a real deal. Now you can really use JSON columns if you want to. Do you? Please tell me that in the comments. Thanks for watching. I will uh, I will push this to GitHub now. And the link as always in the video description. Yeah, that's it. JSON columns. I know this was way longer than I actually wanted to uh, create to do to you get the idea because I, I really wanted to show you every single step and not throw some complete solutions here at your face and you would not really know okay how the heck did you actually create and build all that patrick right so this is why i show you every single step hope you liked it and you learned something if so please click the like button maybe subscribe to my channel thank you so so much for that and if you want to get even more dotnet and blazor stuff and entity framework and whatnot then maybe you want to subscribe to my newsletter thank you very much for that as well and please again write it down in the comments do you like this stuff would you use json columns what are the pros what are the cons tell me that in the comments would be really interesting interesting to to get your opinion here on that and if you want to see more now just hang out here just just do nothing just keep watching youtube will do the rest and show you the next great video about dotnet and blazer maybe even by me so maybe you want to hang out on my channel thank you so much check out the videos here on the side this would be really really great thank you very very much for watching again and thank you so much for your time and i hope i see you next time take care